Hey everybody, this is Perch, and, and let's talk uh, speculators and comic book prices for a minute. That's something I don't talk nearly enough about. It's, it's, it could become an interesting rabbit hole to go down. But I uh, got a viewer mail here, and uh, we'll read it. Uh, this is from a viewer mail who's now in my neck of the woods, or I guess I'm now in his. And uh, so I'm, I will do a little drop by and, and see Keith's Comics in, uh, in downtown Dallas. Check that out. I've heard that's a pretty uh, well-known shop, or at least a lot of people outside the area know of Keith's, and it's... Uh, I don't know, seen as one of the, the more lively, bigger shops. So I'm curious to go uh, go check that out. Anyway, I will come down and see you soon, I promise. But uh, let's, let's read this mail. It says, uh, recently, since 2020, I've noticed another huge boom in the speculator market. These guys have always been around and is easy just to ignore or help them along their way. However, I've noticed a marked increase in guys coming in who have their key collector apps open and eBay always haggling on prices. This kind of annoys me, trying to seemingly get one up on me as if I didn't know why they're buying these books. That is true, by the way, uh, running a shop. And uh, if you're going to come in and you're going to try and, and deal, you need to do your homework up front. I actually told one person this, like, you know, don't come in with your phone open and uh, be checking as you're trying to negotiate. You, you look like a clown. You gotta, this is where you got to use some memory, and you have to kind of remember in your head what's going on. Be, be subtle. Be savvy about it. You're more likely to get a better deal. You're more likely to get one over on the comic shop. Not that that should necessarily be your goal, but if you're coming in here holding your phone and, and trying to deal make, I, it just you, you, you look like a clown. Anyway, uh, the mail continues. My favorite is if we leave a hot book at cover price, so quickly buy it, and you can see the glee in their faces as they tell me, well, now that I bought it, you know this book is going crazy right now, as if they got one over on me. This used to happen once a year, maybe, but now this is an almost monthly occurrence. Not a ton, mind you, but still annoying how often it happens. I will. I, there's, somebody's asked me, by the way, for a, a list of most annoying things on the con. This is also one. Like, Again, it goes with the first bit of advice. If you think you got a great deal on something, don't sit there and gloat to the comic shop. The guy doesn't want to hear it. Just just be glad you got your amazing steal of a purchase and, and move on. But this, uh, I've had people tell me, it was like, ha-ha, now the money's changed hands. There's nothing you can do about it. I screwed you. And it's like, dude, what are you even doing? You know, you probably want to come in the comic shop later and screw me again at some point. So, you know, why, why are you telling me this stuff? It's... Uh, it's always madness. Anyway, also, these guys seem to be buying and not reading. Uh, they have these ideas in their heads like these books will be worth twice as much once they get them graded and they can just flip them. That doesn't happen very often, by the way. I say all this to say what happened that there has been such a spike in these types of customers recently. Also, what is the best way to handle these types? I would like to get to turn these customers into readers. I, you want to flip them. I see what you're doing. And buying books because they enjoy them, not just because they think they'll be the next super hot book. How do you handle these types? I usually just ignore them, but it feels almost morally wrong to let these guys run off thinking all these variants and first appearances will be massive investments, especially considering how many more people uh, there are before that seem to think this right now. I think I read that last part wrong. Uh, yeah, it's... Uh, <laughs> You know, I, 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 what should a comic retailer be? It's, it's like, I'll take your question and, and take it to a broader point. You know, a, a retailer on the surface is somebody that, that you know, so you come in, they have a product, they, you get that product with a timely, you know, good service and you move things along. But as I've mentioned before, increasingly in the future, we're living in an experience-driven marketplace, which means a retailer's got to do more than just sit there and take your money and say, buy. The retailer has to bring something new to the table. Some of the businesses, and comic books are one of them, there's not a huge online competitor. There's not a, a real you know, Amazon marketplace for, for comics like there you know, may be in the future or there are for other products. You, you do have Midtown. You have uh, you know, uh, Rocky Mountain Comics you have, uh, or Mile High. Rocky Mountain, what am I thinking? Uh, Mile High Comics. You have a couple of people who do online sales, but you know, in many cases, these websites are very archaic. Nobody's really competing at that level. So it hasn't happened yet. But it is a, a, a true that retailers have to do more. The, the question becomes, and I've, I've thought about this plenty, is should the retailer protect the customer from themselves? And that's, uh, I thought about it a lot in the 90s when people were coming in and they would buy 20 copies of Brigade Number 1. And they're like, this is going to help put my kid through college. And you're looking at it going, well, 
first of all, I don't know if there's ever going to be a number two here, but no, it's, it's not going to put your kids through college. And, and really, even if you look at very extreme comic book increases, I mean, if we're really going to get to it, and maybe this is just because not a lot of people, uh, you know, have put their kids through college <laughs> or have kids to put through college. Do you realize what college costs? Do you realize how many comic books you would have to sell? Like, you know, that, uh, first appearance of cable that, uh, Rob Liefeld did in, in new mutants. Yeah. You need a lot of those to send your kids through college. <laughs> it's still worthwhile. It's still cool, but it's, it's like, you know, if you're talking about a kind of an investment at that level, I mean, is comic books, comic books is not where I'd steer people. And I've had, I have had that conversation with people. Like I want, you know, obviously want collectors, want people coming in, want people taking pride in their comics and valuing them and, and having this run on their hands. But this idea, you know, that you're going, I mean, people are like, I'm going to be a millionaire because I'm buying this copy of the death of Superman. And I'm, I'm going to make sure not to take it out of the bag. And uh, while I'm at it, I'm going to pick up some of these uh, glow-in-the-dark Ghost Rider covers. And, uh, you know, there's there's uh, some issues of Death Blow out that I, I want to get as well. I mean, I, I'm not saying this to insult those comics. It has nothing to do with that. It's just that, you know, it's it's delusional to think that you pick up a couple of these and you're going to somehow, magically, uh, get yourself, uh, you know, become a millionaire off that. It's It's very hard to become a comic book millionaire. I mean, look at some of the kind of original, the first appearances of Superman and Batman and some of these characters. I mean, again, we're talking millionaire. Uh, it, it's just not like that. Now, by the way, I've, I've given this viewpoint before. I did it on, on Wes's show once. And, man, people got mad. Other, other retail, like, people get mad. Like, no, no, it's a legitimate business. I'm not saying it's not. Um, it's just, it's not, you know, this isn't... <laughs> Just have, have your expectations set. And so that's the approach I've tried to use with customers when they come in and they're like, I'm going to flip this variant cover for, you know, thousands of dollars someday. And it's like, eh, probably not, though. Unfortunately, a lot of collecting stuff, it's, uh, you know, you, you'll see stories about miraculous things that are going on. But honestly, it, it things can be a good investment. Things can be, uh, you can grade your comics, you can slab them, you can, you know, put some effort into you know, achieving a good collection, you can turn around and flip one day. Um, but you should look at it as a long race, not something that, you know, you're just going to come in, buy some comics and a year later, you know, retire with hundreds of thousands of dollars. That's just, it's not realistic. And every now and then I encounter another retailer that, that tries to present that case. And so, I mean, to, to answer your question, don't lead people on. I, I think there's only so much you can do with people, particularly somebody who's coming in very determined that they're going to go on eBay and flip this stuff. And, and there are people out there who have, I, I'm not, I wouldn't say made a living out of it, but they, they, you know, they, they generate some money flipping comics on eBay and, you know, writing short term gains. And that, that can be something that, you know, people do. I'm not holding up my nose at it. I'm not saying that, you know, that kind of money isn't bad money. It's just, it, it's not, uh, th this isn't um, retire on an Island money. It's, uh, it can be, it can be a living. It can be something somebody could do. Um, I, I've got a, I don't want to say friend, but, but acquaintance, maybe uh, it's somebody I know. Um, and they've got a YouTube channel. The YouTube channel brings in about eh, 2000 a month in ad revenue. They're, they're doing okay. They're bringing about 2k and they flip comics on eBay and they, they don't hold on to anything for more than a month or two, but, uh, you know, that, that brings in about another K and, you know, I mean, all, it all adds up and the person, and then there's a couple other little things the guy's into. And, you know, he's, he's bringing in about five, $6,000 off these various ventures. And that's, that's not bad. I mean, that's good money. If, I mean, if you look at it, if you, you know, break it out yearly, you're talking about somebody bringing in about 72 K nothing to laugh at, nothing to scoff at. It's a, it's like double what a Marvel editor is making. I, I kid, I kid, no, I don't kid actually, but I mean, it's, it's not, it's, it's, it's good. And I think that, that, you know, more power to you. It's just, it's not anything that, um, I would, I would struggle living that. I, I, I always, my, my own personality, I'd worry about the long term. I would be uh, living kind of month to month. I'd be like, well, YouTube, you know, knocks me off their channel someday for random reasons. And then suddenly, you know, a quarter of my revenue is gone. I, that's how I'd think. Or, um, you know, 
I make the wrong purchases on comics. I don't flip them. And then I'm sitting on a bunch of stuff I, I don't want. I, that's, that's how I'd go about it. Um, I wish more people had better behavior in the shop. If they're going to come in and, you know, make asses of themselves by laughing about what a great deal they got over on you. I have, again, it's, it's a dick move. Uh, but those people tend to be dicks in, in other ways too. It's like the, you know, you're, so you're trying, you would be trying to battle a behavior that's well ingrained into their personality. Um, I, you know, it's uh, most people, and as, as I've talked about it before, most people who are assholes on social media, they're not assholes in real life. And, and the big reason is, you know, they're behind a keyboard. None of it's really real. They feel comfortable, you know, piping off with very aggressive language. If they did it in real life, you know, they, most people have the wherewithal to realize, the, you know, the other person's getting mad. Maybe they're going to get a punch to the face. I mean, they, there are consequences for acting like a complete raving lunatic in real life. Now, some people bypass that, you know, built-in safety mechanism and are just insane to everyone they meet. That, that definitely happens. Thankfully, there's not a lot of those people. Uh, but, the, you know, the kind of person who's going to come in a comic shop and then do the, ha-ha, now I beat you, sir. That's, uh, you know, that, what's, what can you do? You kind of shrug, like, well, you know, don't know what to tell you. Um, a lot of people are, are noting this, that there's this rise in speculators. And the reason behind it at least from my perspective, is that uh, there, there's been enough people on eBay and on some of these um, just online sites selling comics that the word has kind of gotten around. That there is some easy money there. It's not, I, I don't believe there's a, a big increase in collectors. I just think there's been another vehicle discovered in which you can flip books. And so you're seeing people take advantage of that. I don't know that it will last too long. I think you know, eventually with, a, you know, it, it's like my friend. I think he, uh, see, I'm now I'm calling a friend rather than an acquaintance. It's, I've, I've brought people together with love just during the course of this video. Um, it, it's one of those cases where you get burned for a couple months and you probably drop it. If you, like this guy, has a YouTube channel, as is flipping comics, uh, what, what else is he? He's doing other kind of crazy shit. Uh, he's just into a bunch of little things. But if one of them starts to go bad, he's quickly going to clip it off and then move on to the others. And I think that there will come a, you know, it's not a bubble per se, but there will come a drop in some of the speculation activity that's going on in eBay and other places. And, and so you will see that activity kind of decrease a little bit. Um, my general policy, if people come in and they ask me, and they used to, um, what do I think about speculation? What do I think about these markets? Do I think this is a, a good thing to get into? I kind of give the advice that I do on this channel and like I did in this video. It's like, hey, I think it's great. And I think if you are, you know, if you're playing the long game, meaning you're, you're looking at it in terms of years and not months, and, um, you know, you, you enjoy comics, then collecting comics is, is good. You protect them, you get some stuff graded, you get some stuff slabbed, and you can have some nice little pieces on your hands that go into your portfolio. But I do, I always tell people, I'm like, get into this because, you know, first off, you need to like comics. If, you, if you're just getting into it as a pure investment, then, frankly, become a day trader. Get into stocks. Do like if if you if you don't like the medium you're in, this is not the place to be. And if you're also looking to, you know, make if you're trying to make millions and millions of dollars worth of wealth, you know your your odds are better other places. It, it's it's sometimes hard to deliver that message without people getting you know feeling like you're insulting comics in some way or you're insulting their their hobby. Uh, that's why I always lead with the. You know, do this because you like comics. That's the core hobby. You like comics. Because you like comics, this is interesting and, and you want to have a little business kind of on it. Cool. Then that that's a, that then that's a route. Then you're even if you don't make everything you thought you'd make, you're still enjoying it because you know you're doing something you like. And that's 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 probably the best advice I can I can give. Uh, it's you know it is always funny. I, 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 I can complete, I can close my eyes and see the exact scenario you're talking about. And I'm sure many of the people who've seen this video have seen it as well. The person who goes into the comic shops like, ah, ha, 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 I've screwed you, sir. And I view that kind of the same way as people who announce, uh, you know, various things that they're doing on Twitter. It's like, I have decided not to buy this comic breaking news. I, I mean, Okay. Sounds sounds good. What about you? What do you what do you have to say uh, about speculation about buying comics for investments? Uh, how do you feel about it? 
Um, please, please, please don't come into the comments and say, ah, oh, Perch is 100% wrong here. You could make a lot of money off of comics. I didn't say you, I didn't say you wouldn't make money off comics. I didn't even say you would make a lot of money off comics. It's all relative. I'm just saying if your goal, if your stated goal is to have $10 million in net worth, there are faster, better ways to do it than comics, in my opinion. But, you know, whatever, what, it's your money. Go nuts. Thanks for listening.